Hey everybody, welcome back to activity book creation with a focus on the pike and historic Long Beach. We're still deciding. Today, we're going to talk about making mazes. So I will share with you what is coming out in this book that I'm creating called Developing Activity Books. So, First of all, we're trying to find easy ways for you to come up with the types of activities that you might put into an activity book in a way that you can publish. So mazes, you can hand draw a maze and we certainly will go through that exercise. But before you hand draw, I'd like you to try a digital tool. As we go through these, we wanna make sure that the thing we produce on the digital tool is able to be published in some form for profit because this is a an entrepreneurship exercise so based on a theme you create an activity book that you um, are able to publish and market digitally and in person and in our case our theme is long beach and the historic pike or some combination there. So I have found that there are several maze generators that have been created by people who play around with a tool called Scratch. Scratch is a programming tool and it is made available by MIT and people just have fun, they're playing and they design games. Because of the licensing of Scratch, those games are what's called Creative Commons, and the work that you create through it, the mazes you create through it in this case, are able to be licensed for free and used for profit without concern for royalty payments. So I found one. There are several. You can find a different one, but I just wanted to have an example that we could look at together. So I found a generator by someone called AI, I don't know if it's AI or Al Sweetheart. And it um, might be, I always thought it was Al, but then, um, but uses an algorithm called the recursive backtracking algorithm. Now the goal of this particular exercise is to create the activity book. It's not to create the program, to create the activities, to create the activity book, if you get that out. But if you still want to play, you can certainly create your own generator and use that for your mazes. So now let's, I have this linked and I'll put the link in the video that we're doing here. Now, these links could always go away, right? So be it. So be it. But for right now, it's there. And let's look at it. So here in the maze generator, you have this little icon, which is um, an avatar or I think there's another word for it. And then here is a token maybe. And then here is a destination for the avatar. And this flag, this green flag is a go. So I'm going to press the flag and you can see what happens. <laughs> so it's setting up a grid. And it is carving out a path using this recursive backtracking algorithm. On this grid, they probably have all of the cells identified and they are flagging the cells that have been turned white so that they can figure out how to, which ones are need to be uh, backtracked. <laughs> Back there. So obviously this is not a very complex maze, but it's a maze, right? 
I've seen other mazes that are the shapes of snowmen and stuff like that. And certainly we can do that. I, I don't know if those are hand-drawn or if they have some sort of special algorithm to draw it. And then it places the cat and the uh, bowl. And so now we get to figure out how to get the cat to the bowl. So we could go down to the lab. Oh yeah, that's easy. This is a fairly easy one. Okay, our purpose is to get a mace. It's not to get the most complicated mace. So there we go. And we have a mace. What do you do with this from here on? So the idea is to take a snapshot function, print screen is what I did. I'm gonna stop sharing now and we'll go back to handy dandy GIM. And we go to GIM. You could go to any tool that you're familiar with. I use GIM, any digital editing tool, I mean. Okay, now we are looking at GIM. I'm going to do file new. And because I did a screen print, it should come up in the size of my screen, or thereabouts, okay? So I'm going to do tools, transform tools, crop, and I'm going to crop the grid out. Again, this is just one way to make a maze, right? Image, so select, invert select, image, crop to selection. Okay, but we want to make this bigger. Okay, because we have this cat and bowl, which doesn't actually make sense in the context of the pike or us. So what I did for it is I put squiggle mom and I put, that's me, and I put the double Ferris wheel, which was on the pike. But maybe this time squiggle mom wants to go to the cyclone racer, right? So first we want to overlay so we first we've got to get a squiggle mom. So we'll open an image file. And we have to go find one that contains squiggle mom. So we have to make Trish circle head pretty tiny. Image scale. Now I'm looking really tiny there. And it says new layer. Okay, great, much better. So we're gonna turn that out. We're gonna bring me closer tools, transform tools. Move. This is where I could even be smaller. Tools, transform tools. Yeah. Even tiny. Okay, great. So now I'm occupying the space that the cat was at before. So now I want to go to um, where do I want to go, LeClaire? That's right. So I'm just going from one part of the maze to the other. So the maze is like the pike, and I'm going from one part of the pike to the other. Okay, so you're trying to get one quadrant to another? Mm, just to where the bowl is. So, that's where the generator put okay. put the starting yeah. point. So, you're going to have to go down. <laughs> okay. 
no, no, no. But I'm not saying how do I get out of it. Okay. I want to say instead of having a bowl of food, which it could be, it could be Trisha's hungry and is looking for some cereal. Okay. Uh, we could do that okay. and call this lesson done. Or we could put a another ride or a hot dog or something. Trish wants to have a coney, right? Okay. Um, but first, we'd have to find an image of a hot dog to do. Sure. That's. Oh, right, like an umbrella. That's a really great idea because in the old days, they would rent umbrellas for 25 cents a day. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't have an influx of cheap umbrellas to buy. I think let's call this one done because it's more about the demonstration for the video. And uh, we'll say Trish is looking for um, to have breakfast, right? <laughs> Squiggle mom is looking for breakfast. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we do file export as, and then we'll say squiggle mom breakfast makes, right? And we'll put it into pictures. And then we're going to go to um, something where it says pipe stories. Uh, like activity book that looks good enough. Export. Great. So then we can go to the book that we're developing. Developing <laughs> books, right? And then, so we did this one and it had a different starting and end point. And we talked about how Squiggle Mom finds her way to the sky wheel. So I replaced the Squiggle Mom in a similar fashion and I replaced the bowl in a similar fashion as the sky wheel. It's kind of small, but I think it looks like the sky wheel. So, but you brought up a good point, LeClaire, about entry and exit points being normal for mazes. So we can come up or we can either find another one and demo that, or we can demonstrate how to do that by hand or something like that, right? So, but this is it for now. This is our video on how to generate a maze using a very specific algorithm that's some end program that somebody has created. And hopefully it's there when you put to try to generate your maze. But if not, then there are lots of maze generators in uh, Scratch, and I imagine there are others on the internet. You just want to make sure you get ones that let you use your maze for publication. Okay, that's it for now.